in the very old days, I would have been burned at the stake. Uh, in modern times, they send you to a psychiatrist. Hey. <laughs> I guess that she didn't like. Come on, honey. If you want to come up, you can come up. There's nothing to be afraid of. We witnessed the remarkable ability of a man named George Anderson. Anderson has several theories about how his ability works. A man widely regarded as the world's greatest medium. George, what do you say to the skeptics, the people who are hearing all this and say, come on, George? Skepticism really means I don't know. Uh, like any job, it's best when you know you have to work. OK, before we begin, I just would like to give you a quick preparation, then we'll start. No idea who's coming to see me. When I need you to acknowledge, just say yes so that you understand only. Usually my assistant tells them, you know, make sure you just acknowledge with yes, no, that you understand, whatever. If there's something I'm confused on, as far as I'm concerned, the souls in the hereafter have to clear it up, have to straighten it out, not you. They have to explain it. I reinforce that constantly through the session. I'll always say them without helping me, without volunteering any information. And also, just for the benefit of camera, will you please testify that you have not spoken to me in any way, shape, or form up until this moment? Yes. And I have not spoken to you in any way, shape, or form up until this moment. Yes, okay, correct. and with that, we'll begin. I think that's, again, probably my skepticism, putting the ability on the spot. Okay, let's, let's see you work. You'll see me doing this, and this is just a form of distraction. You know, my hand's not under any type of mysterious control or anything like this. It's just a form of distraction for me. A lot of times when I keep the cap on the pen, I just may go like this, just to kind of like occupy probably the more logical or rational side of the brain. Okay, first of all, a male presence comes around you. Do you understand? Yes. yes. You'll feel somebody's presence come in, and then the soul will send out another signal, like someone, the male presence around you keeps saying, I'm the son. You understand? Yes. yes. Okay. Your mother very devout. Very. She certainly likes what's in my room. <laughs> very devout. You know, from there, it just, then there's really less acknowledgement or any type of responding on their part because once you get into the depth of it, you just follow what you feel that they're saying or what they're coming to say. Your mother have trouble to the chest area? Yes. Like a heart attack or such? Yes. Because it feels like there's weakness in the chest and the breathing. Your dad having trouble with his health? He is. Because she keeps calling out to him, not that she's calling to him to join her, she just calls out to him in concern that there's uh, expressed concern with his health. And I know people have assumed, oh, he just researches. I really wish it could be that easy. You know, because there wouldn't be, so to speak, like, you know, any sense of struggle with it or whatever. So I've never used an ATM machine in my life. So that might give you a clue of how technically challenged I am. definitely came from a very strict Roman Catholic household. You know, had experiences when I was young, but of course they just written off as childish imagination. Later at the age of 14, discerning became more pronounced. You know. You're saying, so you're, you're 14, you're saying that this, this presence arrives and just comes to you. But what, like, where were you at this? Um, you know, we had a basement. You'd go down, you know, I had a train set down there or whatever, you just go down to play with it. It would seem like down there is where the first, you know, presence was made, or she would come in dreams. At the beginning, it wasn't, it didn't seem out of the ordinary to you at all? Well, I certainly didn't feel anything was wrong with me. I mean, I felt, I was as normal as anybody else. But I remember reading stories about the saints, like for example, St. Dominic Savio. He was known for having feelings and so forth. So I just thought I was, you know, doing the same thing that they were showing us uh, that the saints did. You don't feel anything wrong with it until somebody brings to your attention that not everybody's doing it. And so there's gotta be something wrong. They suggested I be taken, you know, to be institutionalized. Psychiatrists couldn't seem to find out 
what was going on. They were undecided, you know, is something wrong with me? Is he a paranoid schizophrenic? Is this, this, whatever, back and forth. So they had put me on medication and, you know, you know, I mean, I was still feeling. My mom was more receptive. Uh, my father actually thought it was a load of horse manure. I think what really turned the tide was when I was taken to the state hospital and the psychiatrist came up to my father and said, there's absolutely nothing wrong with your son. End of story. Later on through school, I spoke more of it. People's attitudes were changing. Just like nowadays, attitudes have changed from how they were back at that time. And I started to feel more comfortable about speaking about it. And if anything, most people were intrigued or interested. They weren't hostile anymore. They weren't ready, you know, to call you names such as that. I'm, I'm finding out as time goes on, the focus is the brain. There's where whatever's going on is going on. They said one part of my brain is dead from the illness and another part has emerged. Very possible. You know, everybody, everybody all of a sudden is, you know, as I say, a freaking medium or, you know, hearing from the hereafter, whatever, because then I'm like, well, okay, let's see if, if this is for real. I would consider myself the greater skeptic than anybody, probably because many times I don't feel it works the way I think it should. You know, there's people out there who say UFOs don't exist. Or, I don't know. Let us begin. And as I said, whatever I say to you, just keep it at yes, no, or that you understand only. And away we go. You just can't say it's bull because you're a cynic. First of all, a male presence has come into the room. They say it's fishing. And another one, and a female also. 20 questions or whatever. Um, you know, you never get names. If there were names coming through, I'd find that miraculous. OK. But somebody's coming in saying like they were Bernie or Bernard. Also, Margaret is here, passed on, because she must have just walked into the room. Also named Helen. Passed on, because she just walked in the room also. It's very rare a session goes on with me where names don't come through. Also, Bob, Robert, passed on. Yes. Who says he's family, yes? Yes. He states you're his folks, that's true? Yes. yes. So it must be your son. Yes. Yes, you can be skeptical, but until you know I believe you definitely keep your mind open to all possibilities. Well, one program said, you know, it's great. Uh, we'd like to have him do it, but can he tone it down? I said, I can't tone it down or make it all like happy and gay and oh, isn't that cute and all. It's not what it's about. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. All right, there's a female presence in the room. I heard the name Cecilia. Makes sense. But passed on. Now, I don't know who, but there's, I'm sure he is to somebody, but there's talk of loss of a son. But the thing is, not yours. It's like he's here and he's not here. Understood? And. Um, don't say whatever you do, but it's almost like if somebody has like dementia or senility or something like this. I heard somebody speaking German at one time today. It's an ability that is used, I feel, in a comforting sense to people who have had a loss. There you go. Thank you kindly. So Thank you. I'm just the instrument. When people thank me, I always say to them, don't thank me, thank your loved ones. To be honest with you, let me see, I am kind of drawn toward you. One male puts a big heart over your head, understood? For some, it feels like a husband. 
As soon as he said St. Anthony, I knew there was something for me. And remember, it's the simple things that turn out to be most profound. All right, well, let me move on. It's okay. One, say she's the real McCoy, so that have to be your mom. Also, apologizes to you for favoritism. Understood? Told you. Did you name Anna or Anna around you? Understood, but passed on, yes? Ultimately, if it's BS, well, someday we're all gonna find out. I'm gonna go to a nice place and people have passed on ahead of me and pets, hopefully pets more so than my family, are going to welcome me over. And if not, then I'm just gonna go into nothingness. You know, you just can't come up to me and say, well, it's all bull. You can't. You have to show me why it's not what at this time I feel it is. And until further notice, I have no choice but to assume it's possibly hearing or receiving messages from those who have left physical bodies. When I walked into the room, she came toward me and I came, and our eyes locked. And I heard a voice in here say, oh my gosh, it's so nice to see you again. And next day when I came back for her, she went right into the car, came here, her home. Yeah, she was up there before. I thought she would have appeared on, jumped into the camera, but she seems to be camera shy. But, oh yeah, she is, on cue. Lights. 